This is the second video talking about section 1.1, Paths and Models. In this video, we're going to talk about some definitions and examples. So last time what we did is we looked at a real-world situation, in this case walking around a neighborhood to check various parking meters, and we represented this by a graph. So this picture on the right-hand side, this is what we call a graph. Maybe not similar to the kinds of graphs that you might be used to from an algebra class, but this is what mathematicians call a graph. And what we have are these dots, and each of these dots is a vertex. So these dots together are vertices, that's the plural. And then the connections between the, uh, the vertices, those are called edges. So this little line here is called an edge. These things here are called edges. And in this example, the vertices represent the intersections of our streets, and the edges represent the rows of parking meters that we're checking. Now a few more definitions. A path is a list of vertices that are connected by edges. And a path can repeat the same edge or vertex multiple times, and it doesn't have to end at the same place it begins. So remember that what we're looking for in the parking meter problem is we want to find a way to walk up and down our streets while checking all the parking meters. So a path is a way for us to describe how we would do that. Go left and then go down and then go here, right? So instead of saying those sort of directions, which can be a little bit ambiguous sometimes, what we're gonna say is you go from point A to point B and then you go from point B to point C and then you go from point C to point D. So that list of vertices, that's gonna give us a way to know how it is we're gonna walk up and down these streets. But we don't just want any path in the parking meter problem. We wanna end in the same place that we started. So that's called a circuit. So a circuit is a path, again, that list of vertices that tells us where to go, and it ends at the same place it begins. Now, specifically, the actual solution that we're looking for in the parking meter problem is we wanna not only end up where we started, but we don't wanna retrace our steps. That's called an Euler circuit. So this name right here, that's actually the name of a uh, mathematician, is pronounced Euler, Euler, like that. So an Euler circuit, that's a circuit, so it ends at the same place it starts, and it includes every edge of the graph, so we check all the parking meters. And exactly once means that we don't retrace our steps. We don't ever check any parking meters twice. So Euler circuits, that's exactly what we're looking for. That's the kind of thing that we want in these parking meter problems. And it's not just parking meters. There are actually lots of similar problems where what we're looking for to solve the problem can be represented by an Euler circuit. Here's some examples of those kinds of problems. We've talked about checking parking meters, but what about street cleaning? Again, the idea would be to pick a place to start in your neighborhood, go up and down the streets, cleaning the streets as you go, but you don't want to repeat your steps. You don't want to clean a street twice if you don't have to, and you want to get back to where you started. Same idea with snow plowing. Again, you want to go up and down the streets. You don't want to repeat your steps if you don't have to, and you want to end up back where you started. Mail delivery, garbage collection, bridge inspection, same kind of idea. We've got to physically travel, and we've got to do something as we're going, and we want to get back to where we started, and we don't want to retrace our steps. Those are typical Euler circuit type of problems. So here's an example. So this map right here is a map of the Washington DC metro subway system. And this map already looks like a graph. You see the little dots there, and you see the connections between the dots. So in this example, every vertex, every dot, represents a station, right? a train station where you can get on and off your train or transfer between trains. And then every edge represents a connection between two stations. And notice that some of the vertices have multiple connections between them. So for example, these two dots right here have a blue and a yellow connection in between them. That just means that there's two different train lines that go between those two stations. So if we work for the DC Metro system, we might have our job to be to inspect the tunnels in the system. And so we would want to pick a place to start. We would want to walk up and down the tunnels and return to our starting point without, ideally, without retracing our steps. So you might see here that actually doing that without retracing our steps might not be possible, but that would be our goal. Here's another example. Here's a map of bridges in New York City. So we can represent this system also with a graph, right? This one doesn't quite look like a graph like the DC Metro map did. So we want to try to sort of transform this into a graph. So we're going to represent every bridge by an edge, and every region of the city is going to be represented by a vertex. Here's what that'll look like. So our regions in this example are New Jersey, Manhattan Bronx, Staten Island, and Brooklyn, Queens. So we can tell that, for example, between New Jersey and Manhattan, we have three bridges. So there, 
right here are the three bridges between Manhattan and the Bronx. And so what we have between Manhattan, Bronx, and New Jersey on our graph are three edges. So we've got a dot that represents New Jersey, we've got a dot that represents Manhattan, and we've got three edges connecting those dots, and so on. So between every pair of regions here, we draw the number of edges connecting them based on the number of connections. So using this graph, this is much easier to work with. So if our goal is to try to figure out a way to walk across the bridges or drive across the bridges, if that's what we're doing, and go back and forth and check all the bridges exactly once and return to our starting point, it's a lot easier to work with this diagram, this graph, than it would be to work with the original map, right? Because this diagram, this graph, contains all of the really important information that we would need. We don't really need the geography and the shapes of the land masses and things like that. So that's all extra information that we don't actually need. Here's another example. So here we have a neighborhood with streets and let's say our job is to plow the snow on the streets. So there's been a snowstorm, we need to go up and down the streets, we need to plow the snow. So we wanna pick a place to start. We want to go up and down the streets, plow all the streets and get back to our starting point without retracing our steps. Now notice that we have to plow every lane. These are two lane streets, which means we're gonna to have to walk or drive up and down the streets twice. And we don't wanna retrace our steps, we wanna to return to our starting point. So Euler circuit is the name for that idea. So we're going to draw a graph. Every intersection is going to be represented by a vertex. So we're going to have a dot representing this intersection, a dot, a dot, a dot, and so on. And then every lane, every connection between the intersections is going to be represented by an edge. So we're going to have two here, two here, two here, two here, and so on. So I'm just connecting the dots with my lanes. So here's what that's going to look like, right? It's a little hard to, to tell what's going on when they're overlapping each other. So usually we draw it separately, but there's my graph. And now I can discard the original diagram. I don't need the original map of my neighborhood with the lanes and the streets and everything. I just need this graph. I just need these dots and connections. So can we figure out how to do this? So can we pick a starting point, go up and down the edges, get every edge exactly once, and then get back to our starting point without retracing our steps? Give it a try. Copy this one onto a piece of paper. See if you can do it. Pause the video and give it a shot. Well, it turns out that we can. It turns out that we can find an Euler circuit for this graph. And actually, there are lots of them. Hopefully, you were able to find one. So I'm just going to pick a starting point. Maybe I'll start here, and I'm going to try it. So let's see. I'll go up along this edge, and then I'll go over here, and then I'll go back this way, and then I'll come down, and then I'll go to the right, and then I'll go up, and then I'll go down, and let's see, I'll go down again. I'll go over to here to the left. I'll go back to the right. I'll go up. I'll go to the left. I'll go down, and then I'll go back up. And that was pretty easy. Usually when there is an Euler circuit, it's usually not too difficult to actually find it. So that's our solution, or one solution, and there could be many, many solutions to this problem. Now, if these vertices had labels, if I had labeled them maybe A, B, C, D, E, and so on, I could have written down the list of the dots in the order that I visited them. That would be my actual Euler circuit. And we're going to do more of that in the next lecture. So here's what we talked about today. So complicated problems can sometimes be represented by graphs. And we learned some graph vocabulary. We talked about edges and vertices. We talked about path. We talked about circuit. And we talked about Euler circuits. So going forward, what we're going to be doing is we notice that some graphs, we can just find an Euler circuit pretty easily. That snowplow example should not have been too, too tough for you to find the Euler circuit. But for other uh, examples that we've seen, we try and we try and we try, and we can't find an Euler circuit at all. So what we hope to try to do is to figure out a way to know ahead of time which graphs have Euler circuits and which don't. We don't want to keep sort of beating our head against the wall and trying and trying and trying and failing. We want to be able to, to analyze the graph and figure out, does this even have a solution at all? And that's what we're going to be talking about in the next section.